To present this year's National Book Award for Young People's Literature is panel chair Elizabeth Partridge. Elizabeth has written numerous books for children, young adults, and adults. Her honors include a National Book Award nomination, nomination, <laughs> and the Golden Globe Horn Book Award for nonfiction for This Land Was Made For You And Me, The Life and Music of Woody Guthrie. Her biography, Restless Spirit, The Life and Work of Darthea Lang, won a Babra, a Golden Kite Honor Award, and the Jane Addams Honor Book Award. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Elizabeth Partridge. I'd like to begin by thanking Harold Augenbraum for bringing together such a wildly diverse, passionate group to judge young people's literature, and Sherry Young for her unflagging support. My thanks, yes. My thanks also to my fellow panel members, kind-hearted James Howe, who saw the good in every book, yes. and wept for those we put aside. Patricia McCormick, whose eloquent critiques helped us to pinpoint strengths and weaknesses. Ruffy Tuffy, Peter Houtman, with a tenderness for plucky girl heroines overcoming enormous odds. Scott Westerfeld, who could elucidate for us could elucidate for us the difference between elf punk and urban fantasy, <laughs> truly, and then plunge into historical or contemporary fiction with the same discerning eye. We decided early on to avoid a soft, oatmeal-y mush of compromise books. With hugely different publishing histories, we challenged one another to look with fresh eyes at the mind-blowing array of books submitted. In the end, we chose the impetuous, beautiful valor of two first novels, a groundbreaking book driven by pictures as well as prose, the deftly woven opening volume of a fantasy trilogy, and a heartbreaking, gently fictionalized true diary. The finalists for the award are Sherman Alexi, The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian, published by Little Brown and Company. <laughs> Kathleen Dewey, Skin Hunger, A Resurrection of Magic. That's Athenaeum, Books for Young Readers, Simon & Schuster. M. Cindy Fellon, Touching Snow. It's also Athenaeum. Brian Selznick, The Invention of Hugo Cabaret. Published by Scholastic Press. Sarah Zane, Story of a Girl. Little Brown and Company. This year's National Book Award in Young People's Literature goes to Sherman Alexi. Obviously, should have been writing YA all along, and, and uh, uh, I wrote it on the Levenger paper we got last night. Uh, the first book I loved 
was Ezra Jack Keats, A Snowy Day. I vividly remember the first time I pulled that book off the shelf in my reservation library. It was a very small library. I ended up pulling all the books off the shelf. I was most intrigued by that little boy, a black boy, a brown boy, a beige boy. It was the first time I ever looked at a book where somebody resembled me. But more than that, he spiritually resembled me with that gorgeous loneliness and that splendid isolation. A couple decades after that, when I was uh, 20 years old, my first creative writing teacher, Alex Quo, handed me an anthology of Native American poetry called Songs from This Earth on Turtle's Back. I had never read a word written by another Indian. And in this anthology were hundreds of poems by hundreds of Native American poets, and two in particular changed my life. The first one was a poem about frying bologna. And how when you fry bologna, it poofs up, and you have to slice it to make it go back down. I grew up eating fried bologna, except my mom wouldn't slice it. She'd let it poof up, turn it over, put stuff inside, and call it a fried bologna casserole. <laughs> And the other was a poem by Adrian C. Lewis, a Paiute poet, one line in particular. And that line was, oh, Uncle Adrian, I'm in the reservation of my mind. That line for me had all the cultural, historic, and artistic power of because I could not stop for death, death kindly stopped for me. It had all the power of, of, of whose woods these are, I think I know. I knew right then, at that moment, when I read that line that I wanted to be a writer. And it's been a gorgeous and lonely and magical and terrifying 20 years since then. And now I stand before you grateful as I extend my thanks to the National Book Foundation, the judges, to my fellow nominees who've been so gracious and kind the last couple days. And I want to thank everybody at Little Brown, my editor Jennifer Hunt, who's been amazing, uh, who edited me even though I can be an arrogant bastard. And, and, and uh, my publicist, Lisa Moraletta, David, and Megan, and, 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 and Melanie, and, and Andrew, and TS, and everybody at Little Brown, who've been so generous with their time, talents, and energy, and so forgiving of my ability to be profane in front of large groups of impressionable children. I want to thank my wife, Diane, and my two sons, Joseph and David, who've had to deal with me being gone a lot this year. And, 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 and all my kids think about it sometimes is, Daddy, when are we going to write a book together? I want to thank my agent, Nancy Stauffer, who I fell in love with during our first phone conversation when she knew that I had written a story that ripped off James Tate's poem, The Lost Pilot. And I've been falling in love with her ever since. I want to thank my first publishers, my adult publishers, my continual publishers uh, who are here. Morgan Entrekin, uh, who pulled me out of a slush pile years ago. Uh, Judy Hottinson, who was my first publicist, the world's tallest publicist. Uh, Elizabeth Schmitz, my current adult editor, who's been wonderful. And, and I want to thank Christy Cox, who works for me, who's amazing, Ellen Forney, my illustrator. And most of all, I want to thank Ezra Jack Keats and Adrian C. Lewis, who showed me the first stories and poems that made me realize that people might listen to me, too. And I want to thank all those kids and librarians out there in Chicago this last weekend. A Jesuit priest bought about nine little Chicano high school boys. And after I read from my book, they all came running up to me and hugged me. I was mobbed by Chicano teenagers. <laughs> and that's really why I'm happy I'm writing YA. So thank you very much.